Hey everybody and welcome to episode 204 of the Daily Dose of Drupal. My name is Adam and today we are going to be looking at the at the to do filter module. This module has kind of just been in the queue of modules I wanted to look at over time. It's not a widely used module, only has, let's see here, 60 sites currently reporting using with 935 downloads. So not a really widely used module, but definitely a module I could see having its place in your site. So what this module allows you to do is easily add um, checkboxes for to-do lists, for example, or um, items in which need to be completed before launching a, a site, stuff, stuff of that nature, and you can embed that right inside the body field of any node. So that's what this module does, and that's what we're, what we're going to look at here in a second. But before we get too far into the video, make sure to head on over to CodeKarate.com. And while you're there, make sure you check out all of our posts that we have. Again, we try to post about twice a week, so make sure to check out all those. Um, also, make sure to get your free sticker. Um, we have a lot of stickers laying around, and we'd love to send them to you. So just provide us your uh, mailing address, and we'll ship it right to your door. All right, let's get to the module. Again, we're going to be looking at the to-do filter module. The version I'm using is Drupal 7 1.1. Um, last updated on January 7th of 2015, so make sure that you are using my version, or if you're not, things might slightly be different. Probably not, but it's possible. All right, so what we want to do is we want to download this module and get it installed, which I have done. So the first thing you need to do then is head on over to your modules page, and we're going to enable this module. So under the input filter section, right there, we want to just go ahead and enable that. And then once that's enabled, there's just a couple little configuration options you need to do. So if you go under configuration, underneath of your content authoring section, click on your text formats. And then again, you're going to have most likely these three. You might have more depending on your site. But we want to configure one of these to accept the um, syntax that is required by the to-do module. So basically, you can see here the syntax is, is to have an open checkbox. You need square bracket, underscore, square bracket. And then for to be checked, you would need square bracket, um, slash, square bracket. So we need to be able to accept that text format. So to do that, we configure on our filter I'm going to use. And there will be a checkbox in here. Um, I was playing around with this module earlier, so it was defaulted checked. But make sure you give that box a check, which is obviously going to allow the checkboxes to be accepted. And also, you might find that your to-do filter will be on the top here. Um, if it's on the top, it basically means it's going to run first. It's going to process the order first. And the problem is, is what happens here is if you leave it that way, um, the rest of these processes will end up not making your to-do filter uh, valid. It will now look at those square brackets and underscores as valid HTML and will just eliminate them. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that process is last. So just drag it to the end of your processing order. And then let's go ahead and click Save. So that's all the configuration you need to do. So and again, I said it works with body fields. Um, it's not a separate, um, it's not a separate uh, field type on a content type. So and again, it just works with the body field. So we're going to come in here and look at our blog which I had previously created. So again, it's going to work right off of this body field. As you can see here, there's no field type for it. So again, I just you need to work off of this body field. So let's create a piece of content and show you how this works. So we're going to add a piece of blog content. I'm going to give it, a, we're going to call this my you know to-do list. And again, remember, it's square bracket. And then underscore to keep it open. And then square bracket. And then we could say... Add another one here for so say those are my two options I need to do, and then we'll just show one that's actually already pre checked, even though this works pretty slick afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and do a slash there, and we're going to say buy some circus tickets. We'll see where I got that done. Again, we're going to want to make sure we have the text format selected as filtered HTML. And you can see here in the description below, or the help text, that it um, tells you the format that you need to use for to-do list items. 
So the rest of it looks fine. We're going to have to save that. And we'll see here that it, there we go. So with some CSS and love, you can get those to fall in line or block level versus in line. But you can see here that we now have takeout garbage, mow the lawn unchecked with buy circus tickets checked. And the cool thing is, is this uses the node save function. So basically it, when you select this, it automatically overwrites and saves that node. So now if I checked mow the lawn, so if I were to refresh this page, it's still gonna remain checked. So if I unchecked buy circus tickets, again, refresh, or I went to a new page or whatever, um, it automatically saves it without having to save the node underneath the edit screen. So that's kind of handy. So again, you can check the, all the boxes and play around with that. Um, again, you, you could use this module really well for like support checklists, things of that nature. You could use it for your personal one. But again, the, the one negative, I guess, is you can't use it as a separate field type, but it does work with any body field, so you could specify that in your content type. All right, guys, that was a pretty simple module today. I didn't want to get too complicated with it, but something I think you guys might at least be, might have a use for, maybe not, but if nothing else, it's something to keep in your um, repertoire of Drupal modules. So let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Also, if you have any other modules you wanted reviewed, let us know. Either Shane or I will take a look at them and hopefully get a video out for you and help you understand what's going on. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Um, again, make sure to head on over to CodeKarate.com. Check out all our latest videos. Um, really popular one we did on Views Module. If you're not familiar with that, check that out. Other than that, we will see you in episode 205. Happy coding.